Hi guys, today I'm going to be making a torta di cioccolato caprese. has no flour in it. It's made with almond flour and bittersweet or dark chocolate. It's absolutely delicious. So I'm going to start by preheating my oven to 180 degrees Celsius and lining my baking tin. So I've concocted my own double boiler. I don't have one of those fancy plug-in ones. So I've got two bowls. One fits, is a bit smaller than the other but fits exactly into the other one. So I fill the bottom one with some hot water. Be careful that it doesn't like squish up the sides and I put my chocolate inside and leave it to stand give it a stir every now and then and it melts beautifully um, it's about 250 grams of dark chocolate as my chocolate cools I'm going to separate my eggs this recipe doesn't have any chemical aeration which means it doesn't have any baking powder or yeast in it it's all mechanical, so basically you whip your air and fluffiness into the cake. I'm going to put my egg whites to the side and give my egg yolks a quick whisk. This is basically just make sure everything is kind of incorporated evenly. And then I'm going to add my sugar. This is a cup of brown sugar. Um, it's about 200 grams if you're weighing it. And I'm going to switch this on and whip it until it's light and fluffy. This is 250 grams of um, softened butter, not melted, but it's just been standing out to get nice and soft. It's half a block, 250 grams. Let's switch it on again, and we just want to kind of blend it until it's um, blended into the mixture quite nicely. Okay, so that's blended nicely. It's quite a chunky, kind of doughy texture. So we're going to add our chocolate now and then we're going to add our almonds and then whisk some egg whites. Look at that. It's making me drool. Now for the almonds. This is about 300 grams. So here, if, if you can't find ground almonds, just buy blanched ones, the ones without the skins, and you can grind that up in a food processor if you have one at home. Okay, so we're going to give this a stir. Be great when your uh, scotch finger decides to get stuck in your dough. <laughs> Much better. Use a wooden spoon. Okay, so you can see it looks quite chunky and delicious and smells amazing. I'm going to put that to the side for now. I'm going to whisk up these egg whites so they're nice and fluffy. We don't want them too hard, like upside down meringue vibes. Just so they're soft peaks, so they're falling off. And again, it's just adding that aeration because there are no chemical aeration. There's no chemical aeration products in here. So just get it nice and soft and fluffy. Okay, there you go. There's your beautiful soft peak. As you can see, just like makes a beautiful shape. You can whisk this manually with a normal traditional whisk but you need strong burutani atoms to get that right. So if you're ready to put the elbow grease in, go for it. I'm being lazy today. We have these beautifully whisked up. I'm just gonna pour them in here and I'm gonna fold them in. Folding is not the same as Stirring. Um, we're not just going to mash it around because you'll break all your bubbles in, in, in your egg white and that's the lift and the fluffiness that we want to create in our batter. So literally take your spoon to from the back and you just lift your dough over the egg white so that you're just incorporating it gently. When your egg whites are blended through we're just going to pour that into our pan, fall out there, and just spread it a bit e evenly. 
Yeah, pop that into the oven for about 50 to 60 minutes. Um, rather go to the 60 minute side because you don't want your sense to collapse because it's underbaked. Um, yeah, it, it needs its time. I may have left a little bit left this for me. We have about 60 minutes and I'm going to work on some decor for my cake. I want to make some glazed oranges. It's a really easy recipe. That being said, you could use orange dark chocolate instead of a plain dark chocolate to give that orangey flavor so that the whole thing is orange chocolate. Okay, so for your glazed oranges, all you're going to need is two cups of water and a cup of caster sugar. I'm using vanilla caster sugar, which is basically caster sugar with vanilla pods in. So whenever I make a vanilla based dish and I'm using vanilla pods, I scrape the seeds off and I just pop it into the jar and ah, vanilla sugar. The ratio is one to two. So one cup of sugar to two cups of water, one and a half cups of sugar to three cups of water, and so we go on. I chopped up two oranges now um, and you want the slices to be relatively thick. Okay, my cutting's not that great. But yeah, you want there to be some substance because they're going to shrink a little bit with the heat. So let's get started. I've got my, my heavy base saucepan here. It's busy getting hot. I've been letting it get hot for a while. What I want to do is I'm going to add the water and add my sugar at the same time. I don't use any stirring or brushing down the side to make my syrup. It's a quick trick that my chef taught me when I was studying pastry. Just put them together, water gets hot quickly and the sugar dissolves very quickly. It helps that the caster sugar, that we're using caster sugar, it dissolves even quicker because it's much finer. Now what I'll do is just give it a slow stir and basically just agitating the water so that the sugar dissolves. You want the sugar to dissolve before the syrup starts boiling. That way that retains its stickiness. So make sure that you're, you don't lift your pot too far away from your heat source, otherwise your sugar won't dissolve. And just make sure you don't do too monotonous a movement either, because that way, otherwise all your sugar just ends up in the middle and you're not dissolving it. So once your sugar is dissolved, it's going to be completely clear um, and then you just let it stand. Don't fuss, be patient. And there is the ice cream truck. The wonders of living in suburbia, but it does make me feel like a kid. So just excuse the background noise there for a second. Now what we're waiting for is a rolling boil. It's when the water is actively boiling, not just a puff puff or a little simmer. It needs to be bubbles and steam um, before we put the oranges in which my pot's doing now I'm gonna slide these in the idea is to place them that way so if there's any splashing happening it happens towards that side of the pot if you put it down facing this way it's going to splash towards you in this really hot liquid so once your oranges are in your syrup it's going to take a while for them to start boiling again and your syrup needs to reduce um, but that's all in aid of getting your oranges sugary and syrupy and then they're really like covered in your syrup. So what I do every now and then is I just give them a turn, make sure the orange slices at the bottom are at the top and the ones that were at the top just get into the syrup. Look how beautifully the syrup is dripping off here. I'm going to put that to the side. There is a li literally a tiny bit of syrup left. And this you can use to brush onto your cake if you want to, to get, add to your orange flavor. My cake just came out of the oven. It smells beautiful. It looks beautiful. It rose much more than I expected. It's got a couple of cracks, but that probably means my oven wasn't 100% right. So I'm going to let it cool for five minutes, and then I'm going to turn it over onto a cooling rack to cool completely before I decorate. So that was my chocolate capri cake. If you want the recipe, click on the link in the description below. Make sure you post your pictures on Facebook and Instagram and tag it with sexy fine food and I'll make sure that I see it. If you like my videos and you want to see more, please subscribe to my videos and give me a thumbs up.
Till next time. <laughs> <laughs>